Hi friends, now in this uh, video we will discuss about the different types of redox reactions. In our last video we learn what a redox reaction is. A redox reaction is a reaction in which one substance gets oxidized and another one gets reduced. Now we will learn the different types of redox reactions. One of the important Redox reaction is a combination reaction or a synthesis reaction. Combination reaction or a synthesis reaction is a reaction in which two substances combine, two elements combine or two substances combine and they form a new substance. Okay, and one of the simplest example we can have is when you react to the magnesium with the oxygen and it forms magnesium oxide. So here this is a redox reaction. Why? Because we find the magnesium its oxidation number increases from 0 here to plus 2 and oxygen again in the elemental state its oxidation number is 0 while as the oxygen has a minus 2. So magnesium gets oxidized. So magnesium undergoes oxidation while as oxygen there is decrease in oxidation number so this is called reduction so oxygen is getting reduced here and the magnesium is oxidized so this is a redox reaction but we can call it as a synthesis reaction as well why because two substances combine and they form a one new substance magnesium oxide here magnesium and oxygen combine and form a one new substance let's have a look at the reaction how does this particular reaction actually occur let's see how the magnesium reacts with the atmospheric oxygen so here is the magnesium strip so once we provide the ignition temperature to it it starts burning with a dazzling flame okay you can see here it completely burns the magnesium strip completely burns and we are left with the ashes of the magnesium okay so this is the magnesium oxide that you get here. You can see this one. The substance that you see here is this is magnesium oxide now. So this is a redox reaction. We have a number of redox reactions as well. Okay. So like we have another example in this reaction can be even carbon reacts with oxygen from the carbon dioxide is again a combination reaction or a synthesis reaction here oxygen oxidation number of the carbon change from 0 to plus 4 and oxygen from 0 to minus 2 so carbon undergoes oxidation and oxygen undergoes reduction here so this is a redox reaction and also a combination reaction another example is hydrogen reacts with the chlorine hydrogen 0 oxidation number chlorine 0 hydrogen here plus 1 chlorine is the minus 1 so hydrogen it undergoes oxidation while as chlorine undergoes reduction decrease in oxidation number right fine the other important reaction is decomposition reaction right in a decomposition reaction one com you know substance breaks down into new simpler substances so let's take here an example if you got a silver chloride AgCl in presence of sunlight it breaks down into silver and the chlorine here the silver is plus one oxidation state chlorine is minus one and the oxidation number of the chlorine changes from plus one to zero oxidation number of the silver changes from plus one to zero chlorine is from minus one to the zero okay so here silver it turns to go reduction because we see the decrease in oxidation number from plus 1 to 0 decrease in oxidation number that is called reduction and increase in oxidation number from minus 1 to 0 that is the oxidation right so one substance gets oxidized another gets reduced clear so this is a decomposition reaction so again let's see how this particular reaction can occur this is the silver chloride AgCl that I have prepared in the lab and you know this silver chloride once you expose it in the sunlight it breaks down into metallic silver 
and the chlorine. The chlorine goes in the, into the gas. So this is the compound that I have prepared in the lab. And once I you know, move outside my lab uh, to give a, you know, uh, a sunlight to this, right? To this uh, silver chloride, we can easily see that there will be some color change. Okay, so let's see how this silver chloride, which actually has a white color, white precipitation of, you know, silver chloride. Okay, see uh, how it, you know, decomposes once you get, once you expose it to the, you know, atmospheric, uh, to once you expose it to the sunlight. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So once I move outside the lab, and it's still there in the lab, okay, here I move outside in the lab, and once I go outside, and you can see its color change. It changed from white to the metallic silver, okay. This is due to the decomposition of the silver chloride. The chlorine, it goes into the atmosphere, and the metallic silver is there on the filter paper, correct? Fine. There are some other, you know, many uh, examples in the decomposition reactions, but you need to be a little bit careful that every decomposition reaction cannot be a redox reaction, okay? Every decomposition reaction is not a redox reaction. So let's say this, you know, uh, decomposition reaction. Here also the calcium carbonate, once you strongly heat it, it breaks down into calcium oxide and the carbon dioxide. It's a decomposition reaction. One substance breaks down into two simpler substances, but this is not a Rox reaction. Why? Because we don't see any change in the oxidation number with any of the elements there. Calcium here is plus two in oxidation state, carbon is plus four oxygen state, oxygen is minus two. Here also the same, calcium is plus two, oxygen is minus two. Here also the calcium, you know, the carbon plus four and oxygen again the minus two. So there is no, you know, change in the oxidation number of any of the elements, either calcium or carbon or the oxygen. So this is not a redox reaction. This is a decomposition reaction, but not a redox reaction, okay? So every decomposition reaction cannot be a redox reaction, fine? So let's take another reaction, displacement reactions, right? Those reactions in which one element takes the place of another element in a compound. So that means, you know, it's in this reaction, if you got a compound, one element displaces another element in a compound. That is a displacement reaction. So let, let's have a look at this particular reaction. If you react the zinc with the copper sulfate solution, you get the zinc sulfate and the metallic copper. So here, the zinc displaces the copper. Okay, zinc displaces the copper from the solution and forms zinc sulfate and the copper from the solution gets precipitated out. This is a displacement reaction because one element displaces another element in a compound. At the same time, this is also a redox reaction. Why? Because we find the zinc, which is actually in the zero oxygen state, now its oxygen state changes from 0 to plus 2 and the copper which actually is in the plus 2 state now has a 0 oxygen state. So zinc undergoes oxidation because you see the increase in oxidation number. Increase in oxidation number is called oxidation and the copper there is decrease in oxidation number that is called reduction. Okay. Increase in oxidation number is oxidation and decrease in oxidation number is reduction. So let's see how actually this particular reaction occurs. Okay, so let's have a look at this particular reaction. Here I prepare first a copper sulfate solution, copper sulfate, and I put some copper sulfate in, in the water to get an aqueous copper sulfate solution. And now to this copper sulfate solution, which is actually blue in color, I'll put some metallic silver in it, you know, uh, the zinc, sorry, I'll put some zinc in it. And once we wait for a few, you know, seconds here, and what I can see that there will be some precipitation, right? There will be some precipitation. You can see here, once I shake it, 
you can see a kind of a precipitation there this is the precipitation of a copper so you get the copper you know basically it's a zinc that reacts with the you know uh, zinc you know copper sulfate and it displaces the copper from the solution okay so here the zinc actually displaces the copper that's why you can see here the precipitation of copper right so precipitate you know you get a precipitation of a copper now let's understand the same reaction again I got a copper sulfate solution here aqueous copper sulfate solution once I put some silver sorry uh, once I put some zinc in it the zinc dissolves in the solution the zinc changes to zinc 2 plus ion zinc loses electrons okay so the zinc gets converted into the zinc 2 plus ions and it loses the electrons the electrons are accepted by the copper ions and you get a precipitation of a copper right so you get basically the precipitation of a copper solid and the zinc metallic zinc it goes into the aqueous solution so zinc undergoes oxidation copper undergoes reaction this is a redox reaction but this is a displacement reaction also why because it is the zinc that displaces the copper from the solution and if you wait for 10 to 15 minutes you will see that the color of this you know copper sulfate solution will fade away to start you know diminishing because the copper will continuously you know precipitate out from the solution and the color will disappear there are some other examples in which the displacement can occur suppose here the iron it can displace the copper again you know rather than zinc you can also put some iron fillings in it and you will see the copper you know ferrous sulfate and copper will be precipitated out this is again a redox reaction and also a displacement reaction lead also can displace the copper in all the cases we can get a one conclusion that the zinc here iron or the lead all of these metals are more reactive than copper because in a displacement reaction a more reactive metal can displace a less reactive metal the opposite is not possible right the opposite reaction is not possible that means if you take here a zinc sulfate solution and then add copper nothing will happen so copper cannot displace the zinc right copper cannot displace the zinc because copper is less reactive than than the zinc in all the displacement reactions a more reactive metal displaces a less reactive metal the opposite is not possible that's not spontaneous that cannot occur okay here is another example of you know the displacement reactions if you take the dilute HSO4 in a conical flask and then add some metallic uh, some you know a zinc in it once I put some zinc in it and we can wait for a few minutes we'll see that the bubbles will start coming out from the conical flask is because the zinc actually displaces the hydrogen from the acid okay so the basic reaction you can see here the bubbles of the you know hydrogen gas coming out the zinc actually reacts with the H2SO4 and it displaces the hydrogen because zinc is more reactive than hydrogen. So the basic reaction actually that occurs in this you know a particular reaction is that the metallic zinc it reacts with the dilute H2SO4 sulfuric acid and it forms the zinc sulfate and the hydrogen gas. The bubbles that you see there is the hydrogen gas. Here the oxidation number of the zinc changes from 0 to plus 2. So this is oxidation. So that means the zinc undergoes oxidation. And the hydrogen here has a plus 1 and here it is 0. So decrease in oxidation number that is reduction. This is redox reaction but we can call it as a displacement reaction also because zinc displaces the hydrogen from the acid again here 
only a more active metal can displace the hydrogen from the acidic solutions right another reaction is disproportionation reaction disproportionation reaction is a reaction in which the same element gets oxidized and also reduced let's take an example of a hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide can undergo disproportionation reaction hydrogen peroxide we know is unstable and it can get converted into the water h2o and the oxygen okay when it balance it it is two times and this is also two times in this reaction you can see that the hydrogen its oxidation number here is plus one and here also the plus one so there is no change in the oxidation number of the plus one but you can see in the peroxide the oxidation number of the oxygen is minus one while as here in the water it is minus two and in oxy elemental oxygen it is zero so once oxygen atom there is decrease in oxidation number from minus 1 to minus 2 so decrease in oxidation number that's called reduction another oxygen atom undergo oxidation because there is increase in oxidation number from minus 1 to 0 so that that means the same element undergo oxidation as well as reduction A reaction in which the same element gets oxidized, same substance gets oxidized as well as reduced, that is called as a disproportionation reaction. Okay, hope you got the concept. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.